This is Norcus Prime 1. Identify and provide supplemental report. This is Benson M12. As explained in the main report, we were fired upon by Bella Hunter Dyson while she was holed up in the airport tower in section 4x7. Vehicle was disabled as a, on approach to our location. Uh, other visitor ma visitors managed to uh, talk her down and damage her primary weapon. She appears to be... Hmm. She appears to me to be... You have been using warning shots while we exited the vehicle, though she may have been preferentially targeting me and Norcus M46. Most of this is in their main report, along with them leaving you behind, which I remind you, you weren't supposed to do. What's the supplement? Yes, I, uh, well, they gave us an explanation of sorts that they needed to go off and do their own thing, in effect, to uh, get things figured out. I knew he, uh, Alex Carter specifically, was lying to me. I had a uh, moment of panic as I began to suspect that perhaps more than one of them may have been involved in the unsanctioned killing. And thus, felt it useful to let them have their some of their freedom for the moment to see what they get up to. Follow along, back a few miles in the bus, and see if they start killing each other off. However, the damage to the bus is more than extensive, and hmm, it's just not going to be workable. Thus, if they are, uh, are more, skill more, th more than two hostiles, I suggest that me and Norcus could potentially be outnumbered. And with these kind of people, I, I think I'd want at least a dozen of us on our side. I understand. However, I'll need a full sink. I've already dispatched Norcus M5 and M Benson M7 to go after them. I'll modify their instructions to have them hold back until we figure out their destination and intended behavior. You may have very well made the right choice. So, much of these visitors is upsetting to us. Agreed. Information, if I may ask, out of the, about the other Outworlder and the, the robot? Not so much. The Outworlder is very quiet and the robot keeps trying to imitate Norcus S31 to an annoying degree. We've separated them for the moment and tried to figure out if we can put a restraining program on the bot. Make sure and Emma's there to assist. Military bot and all that. Of course. Anything else you could report? Besides my gut instinct suggested that we should be a that we should acquire and dismantle the cyborg for everyone's safety? No. You stay there. Repair crews will be there in ten. Benson, over and out. And hello there, this is Izix with another adventure in Stellar Renaissance. Woo! Yay! Woo! Yay! <laughs> so, um, so how are you guys doing? All good. Excellent. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> so I, I will say that Van Velding is going to be a bit late today. Uh, he has some work stuff he has to take care of, but he'll be with us whenever he can. As for the rest of us, uh, we got a little... Some craziness here. We got some some cool people. Who are you guys? Let's start from the bottom this time. Taylor, Peter, what's up? I'm Peter Tilkex, uh, YouTuber and Twitch. I am playing Mal, a hacker slash decker character who is inquisitive about anything tech, especially if it can get him into some kind of trouble. Um, currently stood inside a small spaceship, hoping to make a new friend with an AI. Yes, it's important to make friends. Especially with AIs. Yes. <laughs> they will take over the world eventually. Gapun? Hello. I am Gapun. You may know me from YouTube or not at all, probably. I am playing Simon, who is a gentleman adventurer who is just too old for this. It, it doesn't know anything about all this technology, so I'm going to continue shooting it until it stops bothering me. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, Gepard. I got some some fun stuff planned for Simon here. Hopefully, before too long. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see how far we can get today. And... Right. I am Melek or Yogolos or whatever. Um, I'm sure you can find me around if you care. But I am playing Alex Carter, who is a sort of ex-military gone private investigator, who's uh, on a big case. It's a bit hush hush. And it keeps on following him around, and he doesn't like it. Um, he's got a little bit of film noir, but I'm not very good at role-playing that. But, eh, you know, 
he's he's still uh he's still a, a decent guy who's uh who's uh who he shoots people. And uh, Van Vilding, who is not here present, <clears throat> uh, is playing uh, you know uh, Akash Sayo, uh, who is a uh, police officer who is uh, is perhaps too good for his precinct. You could say that, and uh, mm. he's needing to be um, working elsewhere for the time being while they uh, they figure out exactly how much they want to punish him for things that have happened. Anyway, so you guys are presently in a situation where there's a. Uh, some of you guys exploring this little spaceship that's crashed. There was a big robot fight last time. The, you got your uh, your NPCs, the uh, uh, the archaeologist and the uh, the, ro- uh, the cyborg lady here. Um, but uh, well, that's not where we're going to start today. Uh, we t- uh, first off, we're going to be hitting up a, a something that was sort of brought up. Uh, you know that as a possibility. So um, we'll start with uh, perhaps Simon here. So as you guys, were, you know, what like the day before all this stuff, the, the robots was happening. Uh, you guys are traveling and hiking uh, a, a great distance. And uh, so let's say that you, along your, your ways, uh, take notice that there's uh, several vehicles on an uh, alien roadway nearby. What do you do? All right. It's time for passive archaeology. Yes. Yay. <laughs> so uh, give me a roll on that. Ooh, I, of... I think that passes. I forgot to bring up my character sheet. Just a second. Uh, I believe that does, uh, at least on the version I have, it would not. However, I was going to give you a few bonuses because this is... Oh, uh, yeah. My archaeology is only at nine. I'm an archaeologist. <laughs> You're you're more about the going in and uh, uh, you know uh, 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 recovering the, the the ancient idols and giving them to the museum than necessarily knowing what they uh, fully mean. I'm, I'm guessing at this point. But, yeah, I'm the recovery guy. Yeah. <laughs> Indiana Jones basically is what we're saying. <laughs> but uh, I I will say that uh, because uh, this does appear to be a a vehicle of a very modern design. And, uh, you know, despite, uh, you know, spending a lot of your time on the, the, uh, the rim on very wild worlds, exploring, you know, planets that maybe, uh, don't have much with the technologies, uh, you are familiar enough to, uh, garner a few things about these, uh, sort of giving them a closer inspection that indeed these alien, uh, creatures that drove these probably had, uh, you know, sets of three limbs, you know, the controls of the, of the sort of steering, steering wheel sort of situation, uh, you know, is, is seems to be preferentially biased towards uh, that sort of arrangement. You will also notice that these uh, vehicles seem to be a bit smaller than uh, human-sized, so they were probably shorter than humans. Um, and what more, the uh, you know vehicles uh, tended to uh, have only you know two passengers or uh, two two seats in them each, so they were not very prone on having a lot of people in their vehicles. God damn. So they were small, too many limbed, and not very sociable, making these vehicles triple difficult. <laughs> it's like, they, it's, well, they have they got three limbs, they're small, and there's only two of them, where there's more than two of us. So it's like, there's three reasons why these vehicles are not very useful to our group right now. Epidemic. So that means that an automatic will have four pedals, just so it's still inconvenient, even though they have the three legs? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, that's all right. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, probably. Sure, there's got to be some kind of voice control or automation if these are high tech. I mean, well, they are yeah, but you still tech. have all you still have the like hipster aliens who are like, yeah, but the you know the automatic is just always better. You can't put too much technology in your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the you know, in game here it is the thirty uh, fourth century, and there are still people that insist on stick shifts. So. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine. If you want to do that for your leisure, that's absolutely fine. But, you know, when when some weird city-controlling AI decides, you know what, you're driving manually, you're, that, and, and there was a collision, that, that's it. You are to blame here. That's, that's what they're going to do. <laughs> if every other car on the road is self-driving, they can do whatever they want, and everything else is just, you know, opening up around them. We shall see. We shall see. It's, it's imminent, guys, in the real world, but let's... <laughs> To a certain degree, yes. Uh, though there is only so much an AI can do to react to a, you know, a bad driver. 
Um, so that's sort of the general stuff you can sort of glean from just sort of inspecting it from the outside. Do you want to take a closer look at all? Uh, yeah, I can crawl around inside the thing. I want to see if there's anything in the trunk, or if there is a trunk. Oh, there is a trunk, actually. Um, so as you get you know a bit, bit closer, you can s sort of tell that there is what may have been you know some biomass, uh, effectively dust at this point in the in the driver's seat of the vehicle you're you're, you're having a closer look at. Uh, the so the body was died, then was desiccated, and then slowly decayed on top of that, and it's now there's very 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 little left. Uh, I keep picturing the first episode of Red Dwarf now. A little bit. <laughs> taste, They're all taste, dead, Dave. What is this? What, what's this? <laughs> There's stuff everywhere. <laughs> That's the crew. Oh, I've been eating I, half I, the crew. <laughs> I'm fine. I, this dust, organic dust, forensics. I want to. I want to get the bots out and do forensics. See if I can glean anything from this dust. All right. Uh, as you're getting that ready, I'll have Simon uh, try to pop the trunk. Um, give me some sort of strength check, perhaps. Oh, good. I'm pretty strong. Uh-oh. I'm not. And uh, if you use any sort of tools for it, <laughs> I'll give you a plus two. Well, I rolled a five against my 12 strength, so I think I just hit it like the fawns. <laughs> yep. So Simon <laughs> goes over the trunk, you know, makes a fist, it pounds it down, the trunk pops open, uh, and you, uh, hey. you, know, you, you find uh, you know, stuff that's... You know, a little bit better preserved than what was in the, the passenger's compartment. It's not like a person or anything back there, but there is uh, what appears to be uh, like a, a what may have once been groceries. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, there's like, uh, <laughs> you know, you know, half decayed uh, plastic bags. There's a few things that kind of resemble f fruit, maybe, but it's all like shriveled up and like really tiny. Uh, and you know, half broken and t touching it at all will pretty much call it all, uh, cause it all to crumble. Um, uh, you will uh, also spot uh, what may be some sort of small electronic device, but you're not quite sure what to make of that. Hmm. I'll call. I'll call Mel over to grab the electronic thingy. I don't want to touch it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so these uh, what was groceries in the back? Seems we had the red dwarf reference, so they're like the cat that didn't do like a humanoid, and now these things are running around the <laughs> bottom of the uh, bend of the trunk. <laughs> Not quite. It's more. It's more the uh, the what should have happened to the supply stores in the red dwarf, <laughs> but didn't. No, no, no. They, they've been completely like uh, stasis, stasified. You know, you know, it's it's like just zero zero tower shenanigans. <laughs> I don't think these aliens had that set up for their uh, trunk, though. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Well, they were for the We don't know that yet. <laughs> they, they weren't forward thinking enough. <laughs> they should have been preparing for the apocalypse. So, uh, uh, and All right, I, so there's a electronic something rubber in this uh, vehicle for me to pay attention to. Yes. So, uh, you would, are you going to reach in there and grab it, or are you going to try to inspect it for both? I'm far, going or? to look at it first and see how gooey it currently is. Uh, it's yeah. None of this is gooey. This is all basically been freeze dried. It's you know to various well, long yeah. past goo at this point. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> might have been gooey at some point, but uh, as far as this electronic uh, device, it uh, looks uh, you know fairly you know small bricks uh, yeah. sized, uh, not like a bit a bit bigger like a smartphone of the modern era. Um, but uh, you know it's you know, it does seem to have a screen on the side that you can see, so it's not necessarily the sort of same you know motivational okay. technology. Yeah, okay, let's uh, take it out and have a good look at it. See what we can uh, ascertain from it. All right. So um, give me a relevant skill roll if you got one. Well, that would be either computer operation or perception, depending on the what we're going to do initially. Uh, we'll start with uh, perception. Be... Okay, perception. That's this... a pass by one. All right. Uh, it's a little hard to sort of divine what this may have been. You do, uh, spot a couple ports. Um, but as you sort of think about it for a bit, you realize that this might be a hard drive. Ooh. Uh, could be useful in the very With enough future. room on it to fit a random AI we may or may not find <laughs> later? <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> I, I get the impression that AI takes up a lot of space. 
Now, I actually it's had a to, small uh, shuttle he's in, so... <laughs> yeah, so, so for the record, uh, one of the reasons I was like, hmm, they want to transfer the AI. Think about that. I should probably, like, stand up the AI so I can actually know what st- <laughs> how difficult that might be. So, anyway, back to the, back <laughs> to the situation at hand. Uh, you got <laughs> this device. You think it might be a hard drive, but you might be a little... It might take some work to figure out uh, uh, what sort of, uh, you know, interface equipment you'll actually need to actually get into it, and if it's even, you know, something you extract data from in the first place. So, I happen to have a adapter for connecting to Alien Tech. Would that fit this device? Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> feel free to plug Just happen in. to have a USB to serial converter. <laughs> so uh, give me a, you know, uh, plug that in and uh, give me a computer operations rule. Meanwhile, Gepwin, as you were sort of inspecting this uh this uh, you know, grocery situation. Give me another archaeology roll. All right. That's a pass, by the way. All right. Uh, Peter, you discovered... Yeah, hey, I passed something. Hooray! That so... is good. That is a damn good <laughs> roll. So I got stuff to, like, talk about then. So, uh, you know, uh, Peter, you, uh, uh, you know, plug yourself in. Uh, you kept when you sort of mull over this grocery situation. And uh, you start to uh, come, come to the conclusion that these aliens were probably vegetarians. That uh, this one in particular uh, seemed to have uh, certain preferences for uh, you know what kind of foods they have, or at least they did in this particular case. Um, and what more, uh, you think that they, uh, you know, given that there's a lack of anything close resembling a receipt, they probably didn't use like you know uh, you know money transactions that would require such. Uh, so they maybe have been existing in a fully uh, post scarcity society where. You know, people just go to the store and get like, oh, here's your groceries. Like, okay, thank you, uh, without having to pay for anything, uh, or uh, they, uh, you know, use fully electronic, uh, you know, transactional systems. So there might be a big bank of alien money somewhere. God damn. <laughs> might be or worthless, not. but but you know. <laughs> um, as far as Peter goes, uh, your uh, investigations of the hard drive, uh, you discover that it seems to be. Partially operational, but it's going to need some repair. Okay. And it looks like it's got a large capacity, sort of, what, say, possibly an AI-sized capacity, we're we assuming? Uh, no. It is... If uh, I can fix it. it uh, Complexity-wise, uh, let me double-check this. Um, where is the AI stuff? Computers, robots... Biomorphic lenses, cyborgs, software. Uh, this would be uh, uh, approximately a uh, complexity five or six as far as uh, the, the base hardware is concerned. So sort of a personal computer, you know, uh, uh, small computer sort of range here for what you're experiencing. Probably very similar to the one I have, because I have a small computer complexity six, and it has ten petabytes of, of storage, yeah. which is nowhere near enough for an AI, unfortunately. <laughs> so but, I have the exact same computer, I think. But the the actual um, the actual data, if it's even vaguely recoverable off that hard drive, yeah. if there's any way you can recover data of it, that could be incredibly valuable. Yes, indeed, it's, even if it's just for archaeological reasons, or for access and or alien porn. Yep. <laughs> Maybe that's why I was in well, the truck. Well, supposed to make <laughs> Eggs, <laughs> alien milk, cucumbers. Oh, alien milk. Uh, you, you know, Gepwin, you will notice that the alien does not seem to have any uh, beverage in the uh, in the uh, you know, in their groceries there. No uh, cup holders. No cup holders. Good God. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so they 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 acquiring uh, acquiring some the store was not anything to drink. Uh, it was all food items. They could be like weird, where they don't really need to drink. They get all their moisture either like through the skin or through the food. They, they could be weird. All right, this uh, this this device is hard drive. Mm-hmm. Uh, can I guess turn anything before I try to repair it? Because I'll make sure I don't break something in the process. Um, well, at the moment, you it's it's to the point where. It, to try it's to dead, extract could be you know, any data from it would require you to be taking it apart in a clean room sort of situation. Uh, to repair it okay. be, uh, before that, uh, it's going to be dicey with that sort of uh, without that sort of uh, situation as well. But it might be possible. You might be able to sort of um, tap it in the right direction and dislodge whatever sort of causing the you know internal uh, systems to uh, you know uh, you know short out in the bad ways. 
Yeah, because I do have the electronic repair toolkit, but I wasn't sure if doing it here would be a problem. Um, um, we could potentially lose some valuable info. It would be tricksy. <laughs> yeah. But what's the chance of breaking it even further is the question. Mm, probably There's even between... just repairing, and I'd have to say. Yeah, let's not touch it just yet. Yeah. <laughs> let's wait till we're you know, somewhere a bit more controllable, shall we? So uh, I will let you sort of, you know, have been slowly sort of, in, you know, fiddling with it over the the course of the journey here. Uh, yeah. You know, sort of trying to get a better feel of this so you know when you're in a bit good situation and what to do. Um, so uh, is there anything else you guys want to fiddle around with this ve uh, vehicle here? Looks, looks like Alex knows everything about the the alien's biology. Well, I mean, it's only a, it's only passed by three on some dust. Yes. I'm 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 very uh, aware that this is probably not going to recover much. And um, technically, it's not a biological forensic; it is criminal forensics. So, as far as the kind of information it's going to get out, DNA, I'm not sure has survived, but it might have. That might get that. I don't they know. They were shot right before the apocalypse, <laughs> and now we need to find the murderer. Oh my god! Dun, dun, dun. Crimes everywhere. Uh, I've got too many fucking crimes. Okay. <laughs> What am I, some sort of detect? Oh, shit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, so I will say that from your uh, forensics investigations uh, that you suspect that, you know, the exact cause of death is very pretty, pretty much impossible to determine. But you can uh, gain, uh, gain some uh, general ideas about their uh, biology, you know, you know, picking up uh, uh, bits of genetic code, that sort of thing. Um, Coco. And so you would be able to uh, conceivably identify uh, life forms uh, of a similar type in nature. Um, say, like, huh. you know, if, say, you ran into another body somewhere, it's like, is this one of these aliens? And you, you know, do your thing, you could potentially figure it's like, uh -huh. oh, yes. Or, no, this is something completely, you know, different, different evolutionary branch entirely. So, so yeah, I, I can, is it to the case where I could identify this species or I could identify things that have this kind of DNA? So for example, if they like, if I was like, find four piles of, of, of matter, I could be like, this is three aliens and their pet dog, or this is three aliens from this planet. Uh, three aliens and their pet dog, uh, unless that pet dog happens to be a close genetic relative. Okay, okay, okay. So it could be three aliens, but I wouldn't be able to tell if it's their pet primate fucking monkey thing type yes. that's very very clear okay <laughs> I, I accept that. i accept that. that's cool thank you uh by the way uh get when uh you know eli uh does uh give you uh you know uh, a little bit more uh, info as well about the the aliens he seems to be interested in their glove box uh, <laughs> uh he, he notices they don't have it in like insurance cards but they do seem to have some sort of uh you know uh you know guidebook that doesn't seem to be something you could pick up without destroying it guidebook perhaps uh, auto, uh, auto manual you know that sort of thing so they still used paper <laughs> yeah alternatively it was some sort of uh, artificial plastic or something paper would probably be degraded as well right now yeah <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, so that's going to be probably most what you pick up from this sort of investigation here. And uh, I'll say this is also the most interesting sort of encounter like this that you did uh, if you ran into uh, other vehicles you wish to in investigate. They were less interesting, well, and so I'll just sort of gloss over the details in that case. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so, want to jump back to the present and the, the, the this crashed ship and the robots and the your, your poor mule is sitting out in the middle of the field, not knowing what to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so where do we leave oh. off? Uh, so uh, uh, Cash was sort of uh, you know watching those robots approach. Uh, the you know, Eli and Melahondra, I think, were outside discussing while uh, Peter was uh, uh, experimenting with some stuff, correct? Uh, yep, yeah, I was trying to convince the AI to uh, let me have access to its systems, and it decided no. Yeah, it didn't seem too interested in that. And uh, and Alex, you were uh, outside uh, doing something. I wasn't outside. I was. Uh, I just hadn't moved my counter into the ship because I didn't really know. Okay, you're inside. I think I popped. No, actually, no. I pop, I, I think I. I might have popped my head out and be like, "Ah, oh, shit! There's a load of robots on the way." I might have done that. Um, but generally speaking, I'm going to see if this, if I can get this bird in the air. All right. 
that's that's my next priority, and I'm gonna summon forth my little uh, floaty thing, which floats inside. Because yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna check the systems and see if I can get it in the air. And uh, Simon, what you up to? I was just in the ship watching the blinky lights. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, they are cool blinky lights. Now, you're, you're perhaps slightly disappointed that this is only a human ship. <laughs> yes. It's like, oh, it's not cool alien stuff like from beyond. <laughs> what was what was the AI's name? Hera. Yeah, like the god. Yes. yes. Well, I I want to ask the thing no one has thought to ask. I'm just going to ask Hera if she has control of the ship and if it can fly. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> when I think of that. Hera says, Ch checking. There are numerous systems that are in disrepair, but spaceworthiness is likely. There, there, there is a difficulty in... In, in fuel reserves are no. So you can fly, but we're out of fuel. C correct. For atmospheric or low flight, roughly how far could we get if we were to fly? Are you uh, asking Hera this? Asking Hera, yes. If there, if there was uh, sufficient fuel and given local gravity, orbit is possible. Okay. Alex, do you want to poke at the other ship and see if it has fuel? Yeah, I'm going to check that out. How far away do we think that these crazy robots actually are? Because you know, how, how long until they get to us and murder us all? Uh, you can check in with Cash, and uh, he sp spawned them about a half mile out. Uh, they will be here. Let me do a little math. Do -do -do. Oh, what what's the conversion for uh for for miles into meters here? Um, miles to kilometers would be something like one point four, I think. Um, and then obviously one thousand four hundred approximately for for into meters, I right. think. Or is it one point six? It's six uh sixteen hundred meters to mile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is one point six. So okay, yes. yeah, sixteen hundred. All right, and given how fast these little guys can move, uh, they're actually pretty slow. Um, so it looks like you got uh, that much time. So you have about five minutes before they uh, get into the, 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 the range of the map here. Mm. And that is the complete map since I've now expanded it and uh, have a <laughs> fog of war down to uh, hide them because I didn't want to have to copy them over last minute. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, Fair enough. So, so not close as they have they are on the map I have presently, but they're going to be and I'll reveal it when that time comes. That's fair enough. So you got five minutes to figure this out. Or alternatively, try to figure out some way to uh, deal with these robots. I mean, okay, okay, what I will do is I will get out of the ship. I will have a little scan around the local area to see if I can see any fuel tanks. Um, I'm Before I actually go and have a look at that, I'm just going to ask the AI what fuel um, she uses. There is two types of fuel that are possible that would be able to achieve orbit. There is, in you know, and, and AI starts reading out a long, complicated, uh, you know, chemical formula. Uh, alternatively... Yeah, super hadrons of type 4A. Okay, okay. Well, I'm a spacer, so I should at least know uh, some of the stuff. I'm going to ask what it would be, what what would be required fuel-wise, just to simply achieve uh, to get airborne, not even orbit, just atmospheric flight. Same. Alternatively, you know, and lists off a couple different uh, chemicals which you don't recognize because they are less commonly used as far as spacecraft That's fair enough. travel goes. That's fair enough. Okay. Now that I've got that information, I'm going to go outside, scour the the, the the debris that is around the ship, and also have a little look at the, the larger ship that's um that's nearby to see if there's any kind of obvious fuel port that I could right. tap into. If so the, the larger ship is very much in pieces kind of all around you, but there are a few larger chunks uh, further afield, uh, basically mm -hmm. off map. Um, so uh, 
you're going to be doing that. Uh, give me any uh, sort of appropriate rules, and then we'll uh, check in with everybody else. Some sort of visual uh, uh, perception thing. Yes. I'm guessing. Okay. Perception. Do, do, do. What is my perception? It is that. But I get that because I have a cute sense vision. I made it by three. All right. Uh, you will find uh, at some point uh, several you know tanks that seem to have uh, listed the the primary fuel source on them, uh, as well as the super hadron stuff. Uh, the primary fuel source, sort of checking into those tanks, uh, you th sort of tapping on them and checking their their, their various uh, tanks there. Uh, you will sort of discover that most of them seem almost empty, uh, but they might have something in them. As far as the super hadron stuff, yeah, that's completely completely gone. Those have long gone and basically decayed. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Yeah, atomic decay happens. Okay, I'm gonna grab Melandra and and Cash because they look pretty strong to help me look some of these things because I'm not. All right. Yeah, well, Cash is very reluctant to work alongside Melandra, but uh, we'll say that uh, you know for the speed of the uh, you know you know the of uh, the session here that he uh, cooperates to help you out. So um, I'm well, going... I've I've got the leadership skill, so I could I could run a leadership skill to see if I can uh, get get people going. You know, well, actually... I can drag stuff. I have a strength of twelve. Right, Yay! So... That, that's a lot better than mine. I was actually going to poke you next, uh, Simon. Are you going to be helping out, or are you going to do go. something else? I make my leadership roll by eight, so people do as I fucking say. <laughs> Especially when that player isn't present. <laughs> that player is not present. They do as I'm telling them. <laughs> All right, you inspire them. It's like, okay, we got so much time to try to get this thing off the ground. Let's do this. And you know, you, Yeah, exactly. You know, Short and passionate speech later, uh, Cash and Melhandra are helping out. Uh, and uh, Simon, what are you doing? Are you helping them? Or I'm you helping. I don't have anything else to do. I asked the thing. All right, uh, cool. so that's, that's uh, four of you on the case. Uh, Simon, what are you up to? I mean, I'm sorry, it's uh, Peter. Sorry, <laughs> Mal. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I'm still inside the little ship. Um, just talking with the AI at this point. I would, I would try and hack the AI, but I personally believe that if it's got an intelligence, and hacking it would be a violation. So I'm trying to convince it instead of uh, hacking it. All right. Um... Uh, trying to get <clears throat> most important now stuff like. There's robots coming towards you. I don't know what the meaning is, but whatever the orders are, it's got something to do with you. And you've been here on this planet for, what, 400 years, was it? Uh, the spaceship has been on this planet probably closer to 800 at this point. 800. So you've been down here for 800. They've decided to expand the, ship, the bigger ship around you, and those robots are coming. So we've got to get either you out of here somehow, or you've got to cooperate with us to do something, because I don't think the intention is going to be long-term good for you. I, I I am unfamiliar with these robots you speak of. I, hmm. She, you have sensors. You scan them. She's like, I am confused. I, I the robots. Yes. No. Yes. No. Okay. Processing. I have determined that you are telling the truth, and these entities may be of threat to me. However, there is difficulty with me. How so? I have certain constraints that I cannot allow you, an unknown individual, to go through. You are, okay. in fact, not authorized to access my systems. Well, regardless of accessing systems... How about you fly the ship for us, get it somewhere safe, and we can resolve the problem, the bigger problem later on? Processing. That is possible. Correct. Excellent. So at least we got somewhere getting potentially out of the danger and then softening and solving out once we, we do. Now, these constraints. What would I have to do in order to uh, get you to trust me? You would have to provide credentials that you are a official... Member of crew. But what oh, if by I the told way, you? How do I hack you? <laughs> <laughs> no, is there a safety override? Yeah. So what about um, what if the being down here, you know, eight hundred years? The crew was long dead. Correct. Um, <clears throat> so surely there would be some kind of provision for in the event the crew is all. Then I would uh, wait for died. official 
notification from our authorities to, 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 to transfer a new crew over to command my vessels. Damn logical AIs. <laughs> Safety protocols. Okay. Hi. This is a long shot, but since I'm a knob, is there any way that I can use my high society things to try to tell it that I'm like from a rich family and can control things? <laughs> that is an interesting play. Uh, give me a reaction roll. So remember, you know, add your status and uh, you know, and you know, tell me how you're how you're presenting this. I have savoir faire, high society. Oh, go, go give me a roll for that, and that will be a bonus. And if you if you make it, it'll be a bonus to that uh, to that reaction roll. I made it by four. All right, so that's gonna be a plus four, uh, plus any uh, status modifiers you may have. Where on earth is status modifiers? <laughs> do, do, do. Uh, do, do, do. uh you need attack. Uh, f flashbacks. Could have sworn you had a high status somewhere. Hmm. Well, charisma yeah, might work. Hmm? Oh, okay. I then... thought I took high status somewhere too, but yeah, maybe just charisma. <laughs> All right. So uh, add that in. Uh, add that charisma in because this is a AI that is volitional. And so being charismatic might actually work. So uh, plus six, give me another roll and try to roll high. 12. So uh, plus six, that's going to be an 18. That's actually pretty good. Um, so this is effectively a request for aid. Uh, and so the AI starts to mull over your questions. And uh, I'm guessing you're going back to, and, and she says processing. And, uh, and uh, yes, everyone. I am Simon Xander III of the Hatfield Xanders. <laughs> and I require the use of this ship in accordance with intergalactic space laws that I should know as a knob. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mentioned something about salvage rights, etc., etc., that this is a different, uh, in Lantern space, um, Miami hockey authorities aren't necessarily, you know, in charge here, that sort of thing. This sort of stuff that someone uh, of, of uh, you know, status and, uh, you know, and knowing of these sort of things will, will, will perhaps mention on occasion to sort of try to leverage the situation. I was like, yeah, so this yeah I totally yeah. know what I'm talking about and have rights to do things. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I agree with him, actually. He totally does have the right to do all of these things. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you a plus one that actually gets you to uh, the next tier. Hmm. So the AI is like, agreed, I will as assist you as needed. Thanks, fuck for that. Me putting all this fuel in this ship's not going to be a complete waste. <laughs> so, uh, let's, so, so as so the, uh, the, these these minutes uh, uh, press forward, and you guys, uh, you know, try to get the fuel in, give me strength uh, rolls for everybody's uh, getting involved. Ah, uh, uh, shit. Uh, so that's going to mail hundred. That's actually pretty good. Uh, Where's her? This is not going to be good. Where's her strength there? Oh yeah, I forgot how good that was. Uh, <laughs> Alec hurt himself. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll 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 run off my leadership and just direct people. I, I'm you know. <laughs> you try to lift something like. I'll, oh, mm, ow, mm, you um, do this. You yeah. you do this. <laughs> uh, Eli is going to try to help out. Um, is he going to be useless or not? Um, he's actually slightly useful. Uh, he actually has a higher strength than I realized. Huh. Um, so that's that. Um, so Cash is going to be helping out. He rolls a nine. So that makes he means he makes his strength by one. All right. Um, so the good news is, as far as uh, the amount of fuel you can acquire, uh, tracking down these uh, you know these uh, chemical uh, uh, you know mixtures, things like that, and bringing them over the ship, you could, you probably have enough fuel to uh, lift off at the very least. The question is, how far can you go beyond beyond that? So yeah, that, is, that, is the, that is the question. Well, what is the answer, though, is he? What is the answer to that question? So, uh, I mean, Eric should know. So. I don't so, know. So is the, the somebody thing? here a spacer? 
I am. I am a spacer. I, I'm a pilot so, as well. I so, can so this fly is ships. so. So, Alex, this is your your your, your opportunity. You have a bunch of fuel oh, right shit. next to the ship. You need to fuel up the ship. Cool. Well, I'm guessing we're going to need some sort of tube, or are they like fuel cells that you slot in? Uh, in this particular case, it seems like you're going to need some sort of tube, and perhaps some sort oh, of. Uh, a bite in it. Hmm? Surely the. Uh, Surely the, the ship itself has some kind of removable tube right near the port to the uh, fuel tank so, or whatever. So in this case, uh, roll me space to, to, uh, for you to know if that, that's a thing or you're going to need some help on this. Okay, okay. I can do space. <laughs> space, I'm pretty good. It's it's an intellect roll thing, so I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Now, this is a, a spaceship that you're not super familiar with. It's a very old yeah, design. Yeah, and, you, you know, For all you know, that's it's cool. a stick shift. <laughs> <laughs> got it better not me there you go i've made it by five all right uh you were able to uh locate the correct fuel port for this particular type of fuel uh and uh, it does have a device you can pull out attach to tanks and start uh extracting fuel so you uh cool. so do you do that You've, hell yeah i want to fuel this thing up all right you got one minute before the robots show up suck it up the fuel. <laughs> okay i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna I, I guess there's probably not much people can do to help me right now yeah, it's it, it, it's pulling as fast as it can. The best you can do is just sort of change the uh, the tube over the next tank. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll I'll stay on that and get people to maybe a perimeter would be fun to hold the robots off. I don't know. <laughs> I want to have been explaining to the the AI that this is the new crew and just naming everyone so we don't have trouble and we can just operate the damn ship. All right, it it seems to be more <laughs> much more compliant than it was. Still talks in the very you know uh, uh, jilted and uh, stuttering sort of fashion, but it seems to be coming around to your point of view um, uh, more quickly than you probably would have hoped. <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, Peter, uh, what are you doing uh, while he's basically you know being being suave to the AI? <laughs> <laughs> right. So the AI is willing to fly us, so that's the main problem out of the way. So we can at least get the ship out of the way. The question is. Can the ship actually fly, or is the debris still on top of it? Because if it's on top of it, you start shifting some of that as best we can. That's a good question. Just on Aiden, they just have to slide the ship out from underneath when its engines are running, or something on those lines. But just need to get maybe any big debris out of the way. All right, can we get Mahandra to gauss it? Hmm. To to, uh, to basically uh, repel all the device, all the stuff on top. Hmm. It's a good question. Um, so, so, so you're going to poke Melahandra for assistance on clearing the debris, eh? Yeah. Okay, so she might have spe yeah, we need specific ideas on that. Um, let me give her, give her a roll. She's like, well, I'm going to pick things up and throw it off. <laughs> <laughs> so she's going to go and start working on that. So, uh, duh. how long we got tell robots? Um, uh, 30 seconds before they appear on the map. And then we'll uh, enter combat time. Uh, Eli's going to go inside and because he's scared. <laughs> Here's a question for you. Is this kind of fuel that we're loading onto the ship the sort of fuel that would, like, explode if a tank got hit by weapons fire? Um, you are going to say probably yes. Oh, fuck. So me, me <laughs> swapping the, the tubes and firing at them is probably not a good idea. Because that, that's just going to draw fire. And, that's, that's completely uh, up to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all going to explode and die if that happens, so perhaps <laughs> probably not. We don't have any fuel that's, like, not the kind of fuel for the ship, do we? Uh, you were unable to find any, uh, you know, this the fuel that you were using is basically the uh, sort of backup heavy uh, chemical fuel. Um, you know, normally in a li liquid semi-gaseous form uh, inside the tank. Uh, it is volatile in, you know, outside of that sort of, you know, high pressure environment. All right, so we can't explode anything. <laughs> well, you could potentially <laughs> leave one of these tanks behind and, uh, you know, put it up in front of the uh, the robots as they approach and then shoot at that. I think we probably need fuel more than we need explosions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would probably agree with that. All right. Um, so as you, you're finishing up fueling, uh, you're inside Eli. Melahandra's on the top. Uh, you guys are talking to the AI. Uh, the AI uh, mentions that you know the you know we uh, the fuel is now present in fuel tank one. 
we now have enough fuel to potentially transact over a distance of 12 kilometers. That works. Will we that get us anywhere useful? How far away was that to uh, airport? Um, that was mm, probably close to uh, th uh, 30, perhaps even 40 off. Yeah. To not to hospital uh, t uh, terrain and uh, you know all sorts of things, but uh, getting at least partially the way back could be useful. Right, so there's nothing else in this area because we were sitting out in the middle of nowhere. So we can either head towards the airport and try and get part of the way there, or we can find somewhere else to go. Does the ship have scanners? Uh, the uh, ship does have some scanning equipment. Uh, the You can ask the AI to try to do some scanning. Uh, if you so do so, this is the role they're doing. Uh -huh. Uh, Does the ship I... have any uh, defensive systems, by the way? Ask that as well. All right, uh, scanners <laughs> first. Doo -doo -doo. Operations. Since you're already, uh, you know, Sensors. being swabbed with the uh, with the AI. Right. <laughs> the AI says, "I now have a good map of the general area in my data bank. As far as uh, defensive capabilities, the you know Hera will explain that she has no weapons and her uh, limited." Force shield uh, technology uh, is not viable in the current uh, situation uh, due ah, to okay. atmospheric interference. Also, she has no fuel for it. I, think I knew with it being a shuttle that wouldn't have weapons, but I was hoping for some kind of like defensive, yeah. you know, protect itself. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, no force shields right now. So, <laughs> so uh, guys have meet the. You've gotten to that point. To do, uh, reveal all the things. Uh, actually, maybe I should just turn off the fog at this point. Uh, ba -ba -da. Fog four disable. Hopefully, that's gone. So, in the far end of the map, you can now see the robots have shown up. They're much smaller than the one you guys uh, ran, you know, ran into uh, initially when you showed up here. Uh, uh, they are similar design to the oh. uh, one you ran into. It's like gun in their hands. Hmm? Bottom right of the map, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they do appear That's to have some sort of weaponry, fine. and uh, they are kind of similar to the ones you uh, you guys ran into back at the uh, uh, the, the the base of the clones, uh, and did all your sort of investigations there. Uh, they are perhaps a little bit better put together, though. Cash so smaller definitely means they're more combat oriented rather than the resource oriented so they're probably coming from the distress call from the other one we took out potentially so you uh you know, alex you uh, realize you probably have uh you know one more tank to uh you know get fuel from but you could potentially lift off at this point uh the the rest of you guys uh i'm guessing you're either inside or helping melahandra clear off the top uh is there anybody yeah i'm helping with mostly? the uh, debris all right. So, Since it was my idea, I might as well help out a little bit. All right. So I guess the question is, uh, how close are you going to let the robots come? Uh, I want to. I need to see if I'm doing something. I need to roll a perception here. Okay. Do it. <laughs> and I probably did not see anything useful. <laughs> uh, what were we looking for in particular, by the way? I wanted to see if there was anything I could use that could set up a like booby trap with something mm. to like log roll at them or fall on them or well, there similar. Is, there is a lot of uh, you know debris and things like that in the general area. And uh, what was your skill? It was uh, improvised uh, traps, correct? Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm going to say that you might be able to, if you act very quickly, uh, set up a situation that if they say were to try to pass between uh, the, this rock and this location, uh, you could have, uh, you know, basically a pile of debris, you know, from some of this stuff potentially fall on them. You'll have to act very quickly. All right, I will do that then. All right, we are now sort of in combat time, kind of. 
uh, though no one's started firing yet. Do we probably want? should have asked Cash to come back at some point, yeah. too. Yeah, I'm going to say that he's come back to the ship and is ready to take off on you guys. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, first off, you know, Melahandra is uh, doing stuff here. Let's see how far she's gotten with that. Uh, most of the debris is now off the top of the ship. I'm just not going to do that right now as far as the visuals go. And then up next is uh, Simon. So, you're up. Make a run for it. Do the thing. Let's see. How far can we really get? I moved my character. It'll take me like a turn and a half to get there, or maybe one if I like all out. I can't remember how much that ups my movement. All right. Uh, let's say if you're just going, uh, you know, all out right now, you're in a very stressful situation that you can get to exactly where you are right now. Okay. <laughs> but you can't do anything else this turn. <laughs> all right. Uh, next up, uh, Cash. Uh, and he is going to be at the, you know, the, the entrance. His weapon is trained on the robots. If they start firing, he's going to be prepared to fire back at them. And uh, do uh, Melahandra. Oh uh, no, uh, Mal, Mal, the other Mal, <laughs> not Mel, Mal. <laughs> what you doing? No, no, Mal, Mal, Mel and Mal, not confusing at all. <laughs> not confused with Melik. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say it's, it's even worse that, that a lot of people call me Mel. <laughs> so it's kind of... not confused, confused with the, with L. That one character you guys ran in the in you know. Uh, you know, months and months ago in the in the first bunch of sessions. So. Oh, boy. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> Bring him back and do the episode of the Mills. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what what you doing, Peter? Well, most of the breed's off the ship, so I don't need to be focusing on that as much. Mm -hmm. uh, are we in range for me to be able to try and uh, disable any of these robots, or are they going to be out of my com range? Um, you can give me a, uh, a computer hacking roll. Um, that's actually... that's a pass by mile. Yeah, that's pretty. That's a good. really, really hacking really was. Cool. Yeah, my hacking was at eleven. So, right. hey, Van. Hello. So the Hello. so uh, short update, Van. If you're if you're ready, let me know. Um, but otherwise, I'll resolve this uh, roll real quick. So that's your hacking roll. Uh, the robots uh, you, you can uh, do one at a time. So the first robot is going to try to. Uh, resist this, and it actually fails. You're able to hack in, and uh, you now have uh, you know access to the uh, the nearest of the the group. So we'll say that one. Um, what you doing, uh, Peter, with that power? Fight, um, fight, fight. <laughs> yeah, that is the thing. I just want to get it to uh, turn and fire on one of its the nearest ally. All right, so you're going to give it a new instruction, a uh, a new a new yeah. prerogative. Indeed. All right. Um, and that'll this... be operation. I'm guessing. I'll... Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Give me a computer operations role. You you you're all sort of doing this the in the mind space. You're able to do things fairly quickly when you're hacking. Yeah. You're not gonna I'm be able to do everything, but you, you know, possible. There we go. And pass by two. All right. So I will say that will uh, on their turn that. Uh, particular robot, which I'll now put as marked like that, is going to be uh, doing something particular with its friends there. All right. Uh, uh, excuse me? Yes. <laughs> and it's in that order, so. <coughs> now, Van, are you in that? We can't hear you presently, so. Yeah, we haven't heard anything from you at all. Oh, there we go. Hooray! Um, so, uh, just resolve uh, uh, Mal's turn. Uh, sort of a general update. Uh, they've uh, managed to locate some old fuel pods, and they're trying to ooh, refuel the ship. They convinced the AI to help you know, with the takeoff, and uh, you know, the robots are uh, starting to finally close in. That's sort of the general gist of where things are at right now. All right. Um, no one's tried to kill you yet, and nobody's started opening fire, so. Good to know. Yes. Um, the next up is going to be Alex. What you doing? 
Uh, what's the situation with that extra bit of fuel? Because I want to get every drop of fuel in here that I can. All right. Uh, it will probably take five to ten turns to get every drop of fuel, uh, depending on how your spacer rolls go. Okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> spend this turn getting more fuel in there. All right. Give me another roll. And if you spacer, yeah. Yes. Because you're you're trying to do this very quickly. You're trying to you're under a stressful situation. All That's that fine. stuff. Yeah, I, I I'm I'm okay running running spacer rolls. Pass by six. All right. So uh, for you are now. Let me note this down so I don't forget. Uh-huh. You are now twenty percent done with the remaining fuel. Oh, nice. I'm gonna just keep doing that, focusing on that. Make sure that when they start getting close, I'm just gonna disconnect the fuel and and just get the pipe back you know what i mean it, yes. when it looks like it's all going shit shape all right the robots approach kind of slow at the moment uh however they seem to be frightened by themselves but one of them turns and opens fire on another robot yay <laughs> good work mal uh what's its skill here uh, da -da. And it will, uh, uh, the other robot does not know to dodge, so it does not dodge. And so it's going to be taking some damage. And so it made it by that much. At uh, uh, full uh, full rate of fire means uh, two shots are going to hit, looks like. Uh, yes. Uh, no, actually three of them. Um, so it's going to take a whole bunch of damage. But, um... And this is where we see the amount of damage and go, okay, they don't shoot at us ever. <laughs> okay. So, the armor divisor is two. This is burning. Uh, do they have particular ar special armor for this? Nothing in particular. And so that's... Sorry, I'm doing a little bit of math here. Uh, seven. All right, two... Uh, all right, so they take a bit of damage there. Uh, where's my, my where's the total hit points here? All right, these are the smaller ones. Uh, so this one uh, kind of actually fizzles a bit here. It is uh, now at a whole whopping. I believe I do everything correctly. Uh, um, uh, minus one hit points. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> Uh, it needs to make a uh, health roll to uh, remain uh, solid, and it rolled fantastically. So it's it's still chugging along, guys. Um, but it is going. To, it's it's unhappy. <laughs> but if someone throws a pebble at it, it'll fall apart. At minus one H point. Um, but uh, Mal, you will pick up that the systems are now for for this for the robot you're in presently uh, read as you know alert combat situation. And uh, they're sort of, you know, uh, the, the the hacking equivalent of uh, red lights flashing everywhere. Sort of like uh, a new <laughs> mode has been entered. Okay, excellent. Does that change anything at all about the programming? Or is it just the same? Um, you know, the you know, new instructions are being uh, dredged up from the from memory banks, uh, and they are it's it's basically going into high gear. And uh, it's, yeah. it's it's not out of the possibility that the other robots are probably. Entering a similar mode. It would make sense. They're just that being shot at, so... Yes. <laughs> One of them's just suffered a bunch of wounds, so... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the robots. Uh, Melahandra is going to try to finish pulling off the last bit of material from the top. She is successful. So uh, she is going to finish that and going to hop down and ask Alex if he needs any help with that. I'm assuming that I don't need any help. Nope. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I'll just, I'll just tell her to keep an eye on the robots and uh, and take them out as best she can if they get too close or if they come into range. Uh, remind me, guys, uh, did you let Melahandra keep her, uh, you know, you know, maintain her weapon? I think I, th I think the answer was yes, but I want to double check. I don't think we, we did, did yeah. anything with the weapons except shoot the one. Yes. Yeah, I destroyed the one, but then, yeah, the rest of it, I'd, we, we let her have it back. 
you know, she still has her, you know, her backpack and, you know, you know, laser pistol on her side. She, she pulls it out and uh, readies it at the, uh, the robots. I am going to keep an eye on her, though, because at the end of the day, I still have a suspicion that her systems have been compromised. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. She's at least pointing in the, in the general correct direction, unless she's uh, tending to shoot Simon. Well, that's, uh, you know, <laughs> that would be unfortunate. All right. Uh, next up in the order is Simon, in fact. So, uh, Hi. So you got your, your improvised traps, right? Yeah, what do I need to roll for that? Because as far as I know, improvised weaponry just removes any penalties I would suffer. So let me check a couple things real quick. Uh, feel free to uh, talk amongst yourselves while I double check to make sure I'm doing anything correctly here. Um, that means talk and fill up the space, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hell, to be honest, what, what what have I got to talk about? I could just talk about the fact that I don't have anything to talk about while filling up the fuel, because that obviously would be, uh, you know, not at all annoying that I'm filling the air with pointless noise just, just because I've been asked Filling to... the fuel, like thinking to yourself, who could this murderer be? The fuel has given me inspiration because it kind of looks like blood, and there's all that blood everywhere. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. So, um... So this sh this ship is going to be space worthy here in a minute. Um, maybe, <laughs> maybe we're not At we're not planning on taking it into space. It's it's going to be low <laughs> down on the ground. We're only going to travel a short distance. I don't think going into space is a good idea. I mean, I'd be. I all mean, right. if you don't, yeah, I mean, we're about ten kilometers worth of uh, fuel. I don't think going up ten kilometers is a good idea. No, are I don't we... think going into space is a good idea. Are we going somewhere? or Are we just getting away from these guys? Away. Mostly away from these killer robot things. We haven't actually picked a destination yet. And uh, nothing that we know of is in range. Do we know these guys are bad? I mean, it's a safe assumption, I know. I'm just. No, no. All the other ones were, so yeah. So, Fair I, enough. I mean, these I, ones have been attacking the colony quite a bit. I will say, uh, Simon, give me an intelligence roll, and uh, we'll hey. see how things go. Not feeling smart today. <laughs> All right, so you do fail that by three. Uh, however, I will say you think you got something uh, sort of set, set up, but I'm going to have to ask you to do a dex roll as you... Uh, oh, that's not good. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> as you get it sort of in a situation where the materials will fall down at just the right moment, providing you don't I only knock failed it, it by one. Uh-oh. So I'm going to you know, have you uh, take a little bit of damage here, potentially. So, uh, uh, do you have any armor to absorb that? Uh, do you, I have a nano weave tactical vest? Oh, man. Dr um, plus fourteen versus piercing and cutting. All right. So this is more of a uh, a crushing attack because it's a. a a big piece of uh, girders uh, falling down and, uh, you know, basically slapping you in the back while you're trying to walk away. Oh, the back. I have a light infantry helmet. Oh, actually, that might be f more fantastic. Oh, burning <laughs> plus 30 DR versus burning or crushing explosive damage inflicted by any type of laser. Um, Actually, I'm going to roll uh, random hit locations because that's more fun. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, my total thing is I have a helmet, a nanoplast jacket, and a tactical vest underneath it. All right. It appears to uh, fall down as uh, just the right way that it slams against your left leg for uh, three damage. And unless you have a, a special armor for that particular leg, uh, I'm going to say nope. you take three points of damage. And since your total hit points is 12, correct? Uh, yep. That is not... Uh, enough to uh, cripple your leg at all, so you are like going, ow! But you are still standing, and you don't have a crippled leg, so that's good. <laughs> Alright, so I failed and got a bad bruise. Yes. But, uh, par I will say that uh, some of your, uh, you know, you know, quickly improvised uh, trap uh, you know, is still workable. Um, it's just a question of how effective it's going to be versus the robots. Oh, well, it's only supposed to slow them down a turn or two anyway. Yes. 
All right, so next up is uh, uh, Cash. So I, last, where I left you, you were sort of poking your head out of the spaceship with uh, your weapon trained on the approaching robots. What's your plan? I mean, I mean that tracks. I can't help get this ship in the air, uh, so I might as well cover the robots. All right. uh, you also just noticed that uh, one of them shot at a different robot. Um, so that's weird. I don't think Peter actually mentioned what he was doing to people verbally. I think there might have been me just going, yes, when I did it, you know. And Other than that, probably not. It was Simon Hill. <laughs> Son of a... I mean, I'll take it. I mean, good for us, right? <laughs> so, uh, are you going to continue the action or are you going to take something else? Uh, no, I'm just going to keep my gun on those guys. Maybe check the perimeter every so often to see if someone's coming closer to us from another direction. Uh, give me a perception roll. Yeah, it's a 9 versus 13. All right, that's actually pretty good. I'm going to say that um, off on a distant hill, you think you see something similar to the bus that you guys uh, came in on uh, with the, the clones uh, that got shot up by Melhandra. It seems to be just slowly peeking over the the, uh, the ridge line, coming into view at this point. Oh no, is that why our intro video was more relevant than normal? <laughs> <laughs> Potentially. Uh, I'll point it out to the rest of the crew. Hey, there's a vehicle over there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if if this isn't work, we can try to break for that. I don't know. All right. So, moving on. Alex, give me another spacer roll. If you roll well, you get another 20%. Otherwise... 10% or if you crit fail, well, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I Game mean, uh, I'll, I'll, do me, I'll do my best. Pass by two. All right. So you're now up to 40% of the remaining fuel. Yes. Uh, the AI reports that, you know, the range of the spaceship uh, is now up to uh, 25 kilometers. All right. Not fast enough before we can get back to this alien uh, One airport. One more turn, Hopefully we can the airport, yeah. And it's now time for the robots, because everybody loves robots. We all love robots, absolutely. Apart from the fact robots that they're trying amazing. to kill us. All right, so... They're not trying to kill us, they're just misunderstood. <laughs> well, um... they, they misunderstand that we don't want to be killed. <laughs> they think they're just putting us to off mode for a while. Stand by. <laughs> all right, so... One, two, it's a reboot. Three, four, five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Five. I like how they maintain full speed when one of them's like, you know, bits falling off of it and everything. It's fine. <laughs> it's a big hole in it. It's not necessarily falling apart. <laughs> it's minus one HP. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they uh, end up roughly in this configuration once again. Uh, this one is not firing. This one is going to attempt to uh, fire again. And this time, I think it misses. But it's also uh, enjoying some of that sort of business. Yeah, it, it misses. Yeah. So, Which one misses? The one that's under their control or under my control? Uh, the one under your control. Oh, okay. So they do seem to be speeding up in your general direction, guys. So when it misses, I'm just going to go, Damn it, quick, get hit, out of ban. All right, I'm going to Damn it, zoom my map out here so I can see better exactly how far away these guys are at this point. All right, so they're out at that location. So they're you know, a few turns from where you're going to be uh, very much within their easy-to-shoot range and for you to be the same for them. So, that's where we're at right now. Um, so, Melahandra is you know, going to... She's, she has to decide something. She has decided that this is perhaps a good thing that these robots are shooting at each other. Maybe they've taken to trying to kill each other. Huh. She'll she'll hold her action. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> Simon, what you doing? I want to do two things. Well, one's an action and one's a thinking about. So I'm just going to all out back to the cover where everyone else is. Okay. I kept trying to move myself with the ruler. There we go. I do that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and then just a quick archaeology check, which I think I failed by one. Oh, well. Uh, what were you to, just to think about how likely it is that if we went to that alien airport, there would be more fuel there. Um, I would say that it is fairly unlikely, uh, you know, uh, due to the uh, age of the fuel, uh, you know, uh, oh, you know, that would be there if it had been present at some point, uh, being much more ancient than what the fuel that you guys are currently pumping in the spacecraft is. Uh, and so it is much more likely to be in, in, in bad shape. Um, so you might get lucky, but it is fairly unlikely, uh, fairly, unli uh, fairly unlikely. I don't suppose there's a good chance the bus uses rocket fuel, is there? <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, I think that's about all the info you get out of that. Hi, right. that's it. We're going to have to, to, at some point, figure out what Malahandra's plan was. She was supposed to take this thing. Yeah, well, she see you know, what you sort of heard uh, so far was that she was supposed to investigate and, if possible, get it. You know, you know, acquire it. But you know, <laughs> what they may have, you know, you know, you know, other than the initial scouting, you know, the general plan is maybe still up in the air on that latter bit. Um, but you guys got a plan of some sort now. Um, so you're thinking about that. Uh, next up is Cash. Any new actions? They uh, seem to be speeding up in your general direction. Uh, I'll just wait, and if they become aggressive, if they start shooting, then I'll I'll return fire. All right. If if one of the teams starts shooting, I'll join in. All right. They are uh, shooting at each other, but not at you guys yet. So, so that's something at least. But, <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting for them to shoot at us. Uh, need to make sure I got something tickler here. Ready in case it becomes relevant. So, sorry, I'm sorting out books here. <laughs> ah, yes, the big size and speed and range table. There we go. Anyway, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. next up, and uh, we'll go for uh, Mal. So you're in the, the robot's uh, head there. What you doing? Right, so if I leave the robot alone, it's going to keep firing at the one I targeted earlier. So I don't have to do anything else, right? Uh, correct. It's, it's, it has new instructions there, so you can let that yeah. persist. So I can just ignore it and it'll keep doing its job, and I can now focus on the one that's not been injured at all. Go for it. Okay, let's try, let's try and hack you. And that was a pass by two, I believe. Let's check that oh, again. No. All right. uh, it's a pass by one. Right, pass on by hacking. one. Um, thankfully for you, these... Uh... They're not too able to resist, especially since you got sort of the passcodes here. Uh, you, know, you got the cheat codes, man. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you're able to you can get into the second uh, robot's uh, head a little bit via your your telecommunications. Uh, feel free to uh, do something. Okay, um, my chat's asked me to, to look at something, so I want to ask the question. These robots have a I'm assuming they have some kind of auto destruct sequence. Place. Well, they, they have a, a long, uh, you know, series of instructions they seem to be going through. Uh, and there, some of them you don't understand at all because it's really alien sort of logic to it. Um, but, uh, you know, some of the stuff's pretty straightforward, especially since you got the translation program. Okay. The question would be, do they have an auto-destruct? And if I were to trigger it, how much damage would it do to the surrounding robots, given the close proximity to each other? I'm going to uh, say that they do not appear to have anything like that. Nah, no, fair enough. I was hoping to take them all in a nice big blast. <laughs> oh, mark the other two as salvage. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fine, but they're not salvage bots, and we did turn off the salvage bot earlier. <laughs> can you turn the salvage bot back on? <laughs> we can try. I um, thought they for... were just holding these guys off would probably, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. At this point, I would take the one we're on right now and I would just have it fire at the one that's almost dead I'm not controlling. So uh... At this stage, it's a matter of uh, of taking the one that's not under control out of action and then we can deal with the other two after we have control of them. 
so 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 let me get get this straight. So you're you're in the second bot right now. The first one you touched is already going to be firing uh, at one of its compatriots uh, until yeah. it figures out not to. Um, what are you doing to this one specifically that you are presently in? I'm going to flag the other two as hostile. Okay. But set the one that's almost dead. I'm not controlling as priority target. Okay. So you're going to do that. Give me a computer operations. That's a pass by four. Okay. Um, you gave us a heart counter to your robots, Isix. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys... Uh, it's like, have we have a needed, hacker. What can we so... possibly throw at them? A load of robots. <laughs> So uh, you uh, seem to insert the instructions in, and it seems to be uh, reacting to it pretty well. So, um, but we'll see how it re behaves in just a moment. Uh, next up is uh, Alex. Can we yep, space I'm gonna. Yeah, I ain't exactly it. Uh, Don't crit go. fail. I will try not to. I probably. I mean, it's probably quite difficult to. And then fail. we all died. <laughs> Pass by eight. All right, that's that's pretty fantastic. You are the, the sixty percent of the remaining fuel is now acquired. I am happy with this. This pleases me greatly. The AI reports that it could uh, likely, uh, you know, uh, get you guys uh, forty kilometers uh, from this location. Just for reference, how far away is home station? Uh, it's pretty close to forty kilometers. Might also be a good idea to ask the AI if the, just use its sense to find anywhere we could land in case there is any place else we, we personally don't know about. Uh, the AI. Well, I was originally planning to have it scanned for fuel, but then robots attacked us. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, robots are kind of busy at the moment, so feel free. Well, you, you can still uh, ask the AI, uh, you know, if there's, you know, fuel reserves that it might be able to make use of. I can do that on my turn, though. I don't want to interrupt everyone. <laughs> right. So uh, that's what you're going to be planning for later. Um, so let's see. So approximately there. That's where they're gonna, that one's going to end up. I'll just move them all as a group. There we go. That's about where they're at now. They are going faster. They seem to be on, uh, as they get closer, you can tell that they're actually on treads. So they're like... Really speeding up towards you guys, uh, and they are going to. <laughs> some of them are going to shoot at each other, uh, doo -doo -doo, and looks like uh, both of those are going to hit the the one that's already been injured. I need to actually zoom in for my for this here. So I, you have an exploding robot gif you can put on top of it <laughs> to make it more satisfying. <laughs> uh, doo -doo -doo. Double checking this. All right. First uh, damage. It's all right. Minus one. Uh, seven. Minus two. Ah. Be nice if I put things in correctly. <laughs> there we go. Minus that. All right. And the damage for the other one. It's pretty nasty. It is now at minus 15 hit points. And let's see how dead it is. I'm going to need to, uh, to do several rolls. First off, is it still uh, generally in good shape as far as operations go? No, it's definitely going to be uh, disabled at the very least. And it is also very dead. So <laughs> I'd be surprised if it was very alive at minus 11 HP. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I'm not going to too much detail right now, but the the generally when you're at minus HP, you're like reeling, you're like you're kind of about to pass out. Uh, yeah. When you're at minus your total hit points, that's when you have to start making uh, you know uh, basically death checks. Death rolls. Yeah. <laughs> so it is. Uh, it's definitely quite dead here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I, and ask you little skull to go with it. Yes. <laughs> um. That's probably more appropriate. There we go. <laughs> All right. So uh, that's what they have uh, done this turn. They've uh, they're, they still still seem to be very eager to move in your guys' general direction, and they and now that they're in emergency mode, they are very very eager to get there very quickly. 
Doo-doo. So uh, in the next turn or two, they will probably be within very short distance of you guys. Sort of just an FYI. All right, next up, Alejandra uh, is still uh, thinking about holding her fire, and she does so successfully. And uh, Simon. Hi. I want to do two things, probably. Mm -hmm. I want to poke my head into the ship and ask her if she could please scan for possible extra fuel sources within range. She is going to scan for you because she's AI and she can do cool stuff like that because she's just that kind of fast. Um, she <laughs> will, you know, say that fuel source is located. Would you like me to navigate towards that direction? Please plan a navigation route for when we take off. It will require at least 57 kilometers worth of transit distance. Presently, we have 45 Give it a turn. Yep. <laughs> Unless uh, <laughs> Alex screws up his roll and explodes his tanks for us. <laughs> well, I'll try not to make the tanks explode. Also, how much cover do we have in the, like... In the uh, general facility here? Yeah. For some reason, that was supposed to be a ping, and it didn't work. Uh, so I will say the big girder you're right next to, you can probably uh, use as cover. Uh, the you know uh, tank near Melahandra, uh, similar deal, uh, though she might be, have difficulty crouching down behind it because she's so big. Uh, there's also the rocks, uh, the disabled robot, and some of the other sort of bits and pieces. Also, right, part of your guess... uh, trap setup might be uh, useful as cover at this point. My only main question is, since we have this spaceship, as our definitely fallback defensive position, could I rearrange any of the debris to give us a better holdout zone? Uh, potentially, yeah. Hey, I will strength check then to move some of the debris around to give us like better cover for if we need to hold out next to the ship. Okay, go for it. Aha, I think I made something. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and... Uh... Say, this is the bit of debris you pull over. It's a big bar of sorts uh, of metal, you know, very thick. Uh, it's unlikely the robots will be able to shoot right through it, so that's good. Um, and uh, you now have uh, a bit of cover. Uh, where do you want it exactly? Hmm. You're like, oh, I'm going to lift this up and throw it at something. No, I'm going to put it down somewhere. <laughs> I'm thinking probably just next to that big girder so we, it's easy for us to get behind it and still have easy ex access to the ship hatch. So like here or here? Yeah, yeah something in that. That looks good. Okay. <laughs> Good's one more. We can get three people behind it. Two behind that one behind the girder. Cool, cool, cool. So uh, Cash, uh, Simon has moved a big piece of metal uh, up to be, uh, act as uh, some uh, some cover. What you doing? Uh, if we're going to get a proper line going, I'll join it. All right. Go ahead and move into your position. All right. And uh, otherwise, I'm going to assume that everyone who's aiming is aiming. So. Ooh. Yeah, I'm going to aim. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Um, it's now Mal. Mal, you've uh, gotten two of the robots to... Fi uh, fire at each other uh, a bit and one of them is clearly disabled and you're still in the uh, the second one which I should probably uh, mark as being at least partially compromised here okay so I'm in the second one moment um Can I change its uh, destination coordinates and also fire at the same time, or do I have to do just one of them? Yeah, conceivably. Uh, it's, the, okay, well, the firing is already sort of programmed in, so uh, yeah. Right, so, uh, giving it. Like the second one, I want to give it coordinates to where we, where it thinks we are, where its destination is, but ninety degrees to where we are. Actually, sort of straight off to the uh, the right hand side, move away from us, basically. So somewhere over. Moving at very fast here. speed. On the far uh, far edge of the yeah. the map. Yeah, so it, can, it basically runs away while also firing at its friend. 
So uh, you uh, give me a computer operations. Operations, okay. And uh, and that would be a fail by three. Oh no, it's on to you. <laughs> All right, uh, it's, does it have, to, to make sure to give that, that skill. Uh, it, for, for better or worse, is not necessarily very smart. Um, do, do, do. It is going to actually fail to remove you from its uh, systems. So it's, ah. it's <laughs> didn't fail by much. Not that you to get rid of. <laughs> so it's like, I'm now aware that I'm being reprogrammed. Oh, no, I should start doing things. Um, but it will, uh, you know, uh, basically purge the uh, programming changes you've done so far. Damn it. But hey, at least one of them's still gonna be firing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, next up is uh, Alex. I guess another spacer roll. I mean, they're still a fair distance away, sort of. Mm -hmm. What's the line of sight like? Um, you know, other than the cover, you can sort of poke your head up and get a pretty good line of sight. Uh, there is, uh, you know, some some uh, waviness to the terrain here, but it is, you know, not not terrible. And that sort of distance, that thirty-eight meters, uh, that will give you a minus seven to hit. Uh, you know, those robots uh, from your. Current it's more hit. to do it. It is is how much cover do I have from them, and from the sounds of it, I have a decent accept. I'm gonna carry on trying to pump more fuel. I would say that uh, basically, if uh, waist down, you're probably uh, well covered. Uh, and partially covered uh, uh, on your basically everything below your head. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Well, my head is has not got that much armor, so uh, <laughs> hopefully, don't go um, cold shot head and roll really well. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I could always just pull up my uh, my trench coat and kind of actually. Then again, my head's got some armor because of the space the the bio suit that I'm wearing. But yeah, not not ideal. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do another spacer roll. All right, give me another spacer roll. Ah, just made it. Oof. <laughs> All right, so I will say that you are now at eighty uh, percent. Uh, Hera reports that uh, op uh, operational range is now seventy kilometers. Yeah, I'm so tempted to get that last drop. We may as well. It looks like it's still at least a turn before they can shoot at us very well. Yeah. I'll finish it off, disconnect the tube, and then just fucking leg it inside. I mean, we're still going to need a little time just to warm this thing up and take off, right? Well, hopefully it can take an errant shot. I mean, maybe you should you can warm it up now and get it prepped. Well, do you want to yeah, do that? If anyone order? wants to begin pre-flight check. <laughs> I well, I would, but uh <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else know how anyone else get piloting spaceship or spacer? I was hoping I yeah. can do it. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully the AI can warm everything up and get it going. Are you going to ask the AI to help out? Well, I can't because I'm outside filling up the bloody fuel tanks. <laughs> right, I'm checking to see if... If I can, I will uh, ask them, but I'm not sure if I may turn around still. Right. Um, you're thinking about it at this point, so we'll, uh, we'll have that be yeah. something you can do on the next turn. Do -do -do. All right, so Eli well, doesn't seem to have much of the way piloting here. Uh, one of us. What was that? If we're talking about our timetable here, I'm sure one of us could get on that. I've got a pistol. Does anyone have a worse weapon than that? Just a pistol here. Um, Eli's hiding. I, you know, it's not clear what if he even has a weapon. <laughs> yeah, can Eli do that? Eli, can you do that? Oh, he actually does have a weapon. Uh, he has a laser rifle. <laughs> but he's he's kind of like, ah. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, if you ask him, uh, he will, uh, you know, uh, attempt attempt to uh, do that. Uh, where is he actually in, in the order here? Uh, so he'll be, I'll go ahead and insert him in the order. Uh, he's not going to be doing it now, but he will be doing that in next time it comes up. So, uh, so I think it's uh, uh, bot time, right? Yep, it's exploding about time. All right, so uh, we're going to go to that. So they're now coming in very quickly. 
No. Can get to about that location. Uh, only two of them this time. The other one's dead. <laughs> well, they're not dragging the film with them. <laughs> so they're they're they seem to be hitting their top speed finally, uh, but they're now going to be slowing down because they need to deal with you guys. I can actually zoom in the map again. Hooray! <laughs> um, <laughs> yep. Fine. So uh, this one is no longer under your influence, um, but uh, the the one that is is going to uh, try to attack. You know, its upper portion turrets over and is going to try to fire at its compatriot. It's actually going to miss. Damn it. While the other one is uh, identifying potentially what to do. Uh, I'm being shot at so it has a hostile robot in front of me. <laughs> Alright. Uh, for you guys, it's once again probably a good, good thing that these things aren't, aren't super smart. Um, so they... It is going to be interpreting the situation in a certain location, in a certain way. And uh, that is that it probably should shoot at its compatriot here at the moment. And is also going to miss. <laughs> <coughs> it misses by a spag just about three meters above uh, Alex's head. Yeah. Oh, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, let's, uh, let's do some fun here. All right. Oh, uh, sorry about that. You know, nothing, nothing terrible <laughs> happens. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, if I'd rolled eighteen, then uh, or uh, or a three, uh, you know, something interesting may have happened. So anyway, <laughs> uh, so that's what the robots are doing. They are now in pretty close range here, guys, and they are uh, potentially going to be coming up uh, quickly. And they might be fighting each other, or they might start fighting you guys. It's not entirely clear. So that's where we at presently. Uh, Melahandra looks to uh, Cash and sa- and asks, "Should I start shooting?" As she uh, moves up to here for cover. Uh, they seem pretty happy shooting themselves. Uh, once one of them turns our way, we should definitely focus on that one. Okay. That's, you know, okay. <laughs> In her, her unsettling voice here. All right, Simon, what you doing? All right, I'll just get in cover and take aim. Uh, solid shot. Cool, cool, cool. Not going to shoot yet. Yes, so yeah. uh, I guess... So I should probably technically roll impulsive, huh? Go for it. <laughs> Except my freaking D20 menu closed. I know. I need to change my hotkeys. It like interacts with my scroll wheel and tries to control websites. <laughs> Sounds useful. It's like my computer's haunted. Oh, it's just hotkeys. Damn. <laughs> All right. Uh, give me your... Okay, there we go. All right, so you you back? Oh, uh, I think I shoot it. All right. <laughs> so uh, Simon pulls up and pulls out his big, uh, you know, multi-purpose uh, shotgun-like device, big old elephant gun, and uh, you know he you know takes a, takes takes aim and pulls the trigger. Uh, roll the uh, roll the hit. That was the wrong die. Yes. <laughs> oh. Fine, that's pretty good. Oh, it's a G20. Yeah. Hmm. That, yeah, that, hits, that hits all the things. All right, uh, which yeah, one were you... Fi- that's uh, a good roll. Which one are you firing at, by the way? Uh, since we, since Simon has no idea why they're shooting at each other, I guess just the closest one. All right, so that's 11 meters. And... It's back we can in front of it. So uh, you, uh, your skill is uh, what, specifically? Uh, that's my innate attack. Mm-hmm. That's a large pierce. All right, so uh, your skill is 12. Uh, the distance penalty is going to be 4, so that's still going to be uh, hitting. Uh, anything else I should be thinking about here? Uh, they are not in cover, but you are, so that doesn't, doesn't affect that. Uh, and their size is normal, so uh, that is going to be uh, hitting. Uh, roll me some damage. All right, three, three D. So it's just 3D6. Yep. Eight so, and piercing, I think. All right. So um, the robots, uh, I am going to have you roll me a hit location because that's going to be fun too. It'll actually be, uh, potentially matter depending on where you are going to be. Uh, all right. So just give me a, a, a roll. Three again. Yes. 
If you get a uh, a three or an eighteen, uh, unfortunately, you get uh, something uh, fairly in the middle. Um, that will uh, your your slug impacts, but doesn't seem to be doing uh, to have done much damage to it. Where's my my thing here? Ah. So it is. Uh, What's well, its total area? It now has four hit points. So it, these things seem to be pretty well armored. And feel well armed as well, welcome. Um all right. Uh so you've taken your impulsive action to, and the robots may react to that, but they might, might not. Uh Cash, what you up to? Simon just uh, opened up. Yeah, if one of us has shot a robot, I'm just going to open fire on that robot. If we're in it, I'm going to focus on one target and put everything on it to take it down. All right, uh, which one? The closer one the further one? I believe he shot the closer one, so the closer one. All right, so that will also be a minus uh, four to your skill. Give me a roll. Are you uh, doing a single shot or are you doing uh, more than one shot? Just, just one shot. All right. I should get uh, what three point bonus for aiming in the previous turns. Yes. So that's going to be a seven versus, I believe, eleven. Okay, so that's a... They, they are not dodging, so that will be uh, hitting. Uh, roll me some damage for that. So, uh, seven damage? Oh, no, no, that's what you rolled before. Oh, that's pretty pretty low roll. Three, three plus three, right? Uh, let me double check your stuff. Your... That's the, the stats for the gun. I'm trying to make sure I understand it right. 3d6 plus 3. Uh, so, so what does it say exactly? Uh, type it out for me if you can. So, uh, unfortunately, I don't have your full equipment right in front of me right now. Alright, so uh, the 3 in parentheses is actually an armor divisor. Uh, ah, I apologize. Yes. Uh, so uh, you rolled a, uh, a 3 damage. Uh, exactly the, 3. Yeah. So the, Goddamn, that is... Bad luck, man. Bad luck. <laughs> so uh, your your shot impacts, but it doesn't seem to do any damage. So they are uh, they are they seem to be in uh, generally unfazed by your your laser fire there. All right. All right. Uh, oh, who's next? Who's next? Uh, Mal. You've lost control of the robots. Want, did they lose access to it, or did they, did they just lose the orders? Uh, you have lost uh, the. Uh, you, you've lost. You're, you're still technically in it, but you've lost the instructions that you put in, and it seems to be much more okay. active and resisting you now. Okay, so I can, I can just roll another uh, operation to give it new orders. I'd have to hack it again. You'd have to hack, it, hack it again to, uh, to to convince it what's up. Okay. You could also tell us to quit shooting it. Say again. You could tell us to quit shooting it. If that's what the problem is. The problem right now isn't that you're shooting it. The problem is I failed to check and I tried to make it fight, change its orders. That's when it found me out. Right. Um, I think the best option right now would be to switch back to the other one I'm, I have control of and... Uh, <clears throat> Actually, no. I'll hack this one again, try and get it under control. Let's see. And we have it. Yeah. It was against an 11, so it's pretty decent. So, uh... So you're... you're uh, how much did you make it, make it that by? Uh, never mind, it It falls back under your influence. <laughs> <laughs> it, I made that by 5 anyway. Okay. Um, And I'm going to give it the orders to shoot its uh, ally again. Right, because so if you can take the one out, then I can either, either they can take it out, or I can shut it down next time anyway. So, so uh, give me a computer ops. And a pass by six. All right, so you uh, give it that new, uh, new instruction. So it 
thinks now perhaps that this other one is the one who's hack- hacking it. <laughs> 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 it's like, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> All right. Uh, Eli uh, is going to, you know, f- offer the, you know, follow the ins- uh, instructions, going to go up to the front of the ship and uh, try to uh, prep the ship for takeoff. And uh, he'll uh, ask Hera to help out. Uh, Eli's role is... He doesn't really have any useful skills for this, honestly. <laughs> um, could just ask the AI to do it for him. Well, he, he is asking that, but he also is, is trying to yeah. actively help. So he's not going to be any use for this. The AI, on the other hand, is going to roll a bit better. And I think that is... Uh, in fact, uh, that's one of the skills actually. I think I gave it pretty good stats on. Um, it's not a crit, but it is pretty dang good. So I'm going to say that uh, the the ship starts coming to life, and uh, you, know, you you know out people outside start hearing you know machine noises and such. There are some noises that are obviously not good ones, like <coughs> and things like that. But things are coming coming to life, and the ship is warming up. And in fact, uh, you start, uh, you, know, you know, the, you know, you know, Alex, you st- see some lights beeping on the, uh, you know, at you from the, uh, you know, the, the, the fuel port. It's like, warning, <laughs> ship entering takeoff mode. <laughs> that, that's, that's cool. I'm okay with this. That's, that's just, that's just warnings for plebs who don't know what they're doing. I know what I'm doing. I, I'm going to finish fueling. <laughs> uh, in fact, it's your turn next. I figured as much. Made it just. All right. You get the last of the fuel. <laughs> Good to the last drop. It's now all fueled okay. up. If everything you could find. Okay, I'm gonna dis- dis- detach the tube and retract it back into the hull and fucking make sure that we can take off without killing ourselves. All right, uh, go ahead, head in, and uh, try to take over for Eli. Otherwise, he could get you all killed. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna see what's going on on the panel. <laughs> see what uh, what all the checks need to be done. Um, I'm gonna tell everyone. Well, the moment I think that it's ready to take off i'm gonna order everyone inside all right um so that will be not quite yet but it's coming up soonish so the uh so the robots they seem to be having some issues here uh i'm going to do a roll for both of them all right i will say that uh the uh mal you start getting a lot of interesting traffic between the two of them uh they appear to be communicating in some fashion uh, and, uh, give me an intelligence roll to parse what exactly they're trying to get at. That would be a fail by <laughs> a lot. Oh, well, that's intelligence is there. Twelve. Isn't that's intelligence. Pretty much a crit fail. It's <laughs> pretty yeah, close. Twelve thousand, but yeah. But. Um, <laughs> so yeah, your 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 skill isn't so small that it's going to be a crit fail, but it is very it's much. A fail by you, have, you have no idea what they're talking about. It's all. In weird gobbledygook for you at the moment. Um, so, um, they're doing that, and they both turn towards the, the new perceived threat and proceed, and one gets there, and the other one gets here, and... Get one, give me another... I, go, I think they found me out. Uh, get one, give me a, uh, <laughs> uh, a, a, a uh, another intelligence roll for your trap system there. Hey. Oh, I think I made it that time. Huzzah! Even. Your trap goes off, and they are going to uh, get pelted by uh, some uh, collapsing debris that you set up in a uh, very useful fashion as they are st- st- strumming, you know, storming right through it. So, uh, uh, give me, say, uh, uh, 2d6 roll, uh, you know, actually, I, I need to roll their situation to see how they are faring. That as doesn't far as look this. like much dodging. Not really, no. <laughs> um, ooh, that's not the robots, that's the AI. Um, so... Give me a, uh, you know, uh, roll of four uh, dice for each one of them. All right. First robot. Fourteen. Mm-hmm. Second robot. Sixteen. All right. 
So um, they are uh, pelted by falling debris. Uh, this one now has four hit points. This one now has three. But they are also they also get stuck in the in the uh, in the wreckage, and they are uh, they have stopped. And I'm going to say that they are going to need at least one turn to extract themselves from the situation. But uh, they... Hey, uh, it worked. As they designed. Also, <laughs> but, but they also take no other actions, including trying to shoot at each other. So, that's where we're at right now. Um... Melahandra is going to, for her uh, turn, take a, a shot at one of the robots uh, with her laser pistol. She's going to use a uh, you know a full salvo, and uh, she's going to hit with three of them. So she's going to do potentially some damage. Um, pretty decent rolls there. Uh, in fact. You know, so sort of a general uh, gist of things when you're dealing with, uh, you know, uh, damage rolls and things like that. Uh, high damage rolls uh, can be very effective, uh, you know, once you sort of overcome uh, armor situations. And uh, Metal Andre just happens to have a pretty good gun as far as that is concerned. Um, let me do a little bit of math. Minus that. Uh... Feel free to talk to us yourselves for a moment. <laughs> well, so we might not actually even have to flee too hurriedly from these things. I mean, it sounds to me like they're pretty weak at the moment. But the other question is, there's also a bus on its way in, and didn't Melandra have a issue with them finding the ship? Yeah, yeah, she did. All right. So my theory is that if we try to stay around afterwards, she's not going to be too happy about that. If yeah, we have we time to not fight robots, we should see where the ship is going to take us for the fuel, just in case it's like the middle of the enemy robot base. Well, it's that uh, airport that we passed through, <coughs> wasn't it, earlier? They no. didn't say. We just found a new fuel source. Oh, oh Well, okay. no, the said, said the airport was about 20 kilometers out. The yes. home base was about 50, and the fuel was at some like 70. So, okay. well, go to the they they had more base fuel work of it. So the yeah, so, you might want to check the map. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, a, fair, fair point. So you, the AI did, explicitly did not tell you where this fuel source was, uh, just that it was approximately 50 kilometers away. Uh, for all you know, that could be the home base, but you've not asked. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, but definitely not the airport. So. So Once we get in the air, we'll have time to ask. So uh, Melahandra does uh, f uh, fire her weapon at uh, one of the uh, the uh, uh, robots, and it is uh, seems disabled. It seems to be out of commission. It does. It still seems to be moving in, around some, but it's it's not in a good shape. The other one, though, it's it's still still active. Next up, Simon. Uh. Well, if it doesn't seem like we're falling back immediately, I need to just hunker down and reload. Okay. So you're uh, reloading your big big elephant gun here. Uh, with uh, what kind of shot? A uh, solid shot again for these ones. Okay. Uh, next up, Cash, what you doing? Yeah, I'm just going to continue shooting. All right. Uh, single shot, uh, multiple, or what? Uh, multiple, I guess. Oh, uh, this is just a regular 3d6? Uh, 3d6, compare it to your skill. Doo -doo. This could be a 14. All right, and uh, your skill is twelve. Twelve. All right, so you you uh, straight up miss. Yep. So you come very close, but you like slice the ground right in front of it. Um, or heck, maybe it like cuts part of the trap or something. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, anything else you want to do? You could uh, potentially still run uh, right inside if you like. 
Uh, I'm gonna wait until we're ready to take off. All right, uh, Mal, what you doing? You uh, lost track of one of your robots. Uh, maybe it's not entirely clear what they're doing. They seem to be operating with different instructions, though. That that are coming up. Uh, do you want to try to make sense of it, or are you going to try to give it more instructions? At this point, I want to try and shut one of them off. Because I can always try and talk to the other one, if needed, in the future. But this one, I want to get rid of one of them in the equation, if possible. All right. So, I also want to, if possible, to record this conversation so I can decipher it for later use. All right, so... Uh, uh, let's... Given that they know about me, do I have to hack them again? Um... I'm going to say at the moment, no, because you're presently inside the one of them, system-wise. Uh, okay. So, operation. And pass by six. All right. I was going to say, I was, at this point, you probably are dealing with a minus four penalty uh, due to their uh, awareness, but uh, you are going to be passing that. Uh, they are going to try to resist, and they are going to, to, to fail for, uh, for your uh, shutdown orders. Alright, so one's down. Is it? Wait, you said it failed to shut down. I put it shut down, so. Uh, the last robot disables. Yay. But you guys keep shooting. <laughs> <laughs> so, um,. So, uh, you know, Alex, you see Eli pushing buttons. Hera is doing her stuff, but Eli is like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, this one, he pushes a button. It's the, it's the wrong button. No, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna <laughs> stop him pushing the wrong buttons at this point. Okay. <laughs> uh, go ahead and give me. So, what you're doing is he's trying to do the pre-flight check. He pisses up this button, pisses it, and the cup holder drops out, and yeah, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, if he crit failed, he would have dumped your fuel. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! Well, um, go. So, so the the I will say that for the moment, at least, the robots do seem to be uh, in uh, you know out of commission. Standby. Yeah, they're at least in standby mode of some sort. So uh, you do have at least a few minutes before anything else starts coming out of the woodwork to bother you. Okay. Well, now I'm on the console. Um, I'm going to call up the waypoints that the, if I can, of course, the waypoints that the AI has specified as being a good source of fuel and try and find out the comparison between it, the airport, and then the home base where we landed, where all the clones are. Just right. So I can sort of see roughly where everything is. All right. So the uh, the airport was relatively close to the home base. Uh, it was a, 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 a you know, a, a slow c crawl slash a... A uh, bit of a sprint for Melhandra to get to initially. Uh, the uh, the fuel source uh, is not there. It is also not the home base. Uh, the fuel okay. source is at a different location entirely. Does it? Does there any other information as to why it thinks there's fuel there? What, what else is there? Is it a structure or? Uh, there uh, is. Question: Would that would it be the location where we were told to go for the robots again? Uh, give me a roll. Intelligence. Who, who, and what? Intelligence. Oh. Or navigation, if uh, of a uh, planetary sort. If anybody has that, I have space navigation, <laughs> but that's not quite right. Okay, I'll roll the. Uh... I'll do an intelligence thing because intelligence. You know... My intelligence was twelve anyway, so that's good. All right, so uh, that's that's a pretty good good roll there. Uh, in fact, I make mine by eight. All right, so both of you guys got. Got a general idea. That's probably pretty close to where all the robots are. Ooh, okay. That could be potentially useful. How, how far away was, was it again? Did you say 50k? About 50 kilometers, yes. What's our maximum range with the fuel that we've got? Uh, the maximum range right now is 90 kilometers. So you could potentially, so, you could potentially make yeah. it there and potentially very close back to home base. So, because my thought cool. is, worst case scenario, we get there and it's full of fucking robots and shit. We have to turn around and flee, which is fine. We've got enough fuel then to set down not too far away from home base. Hopefully, we can land somewhere, refuel, investigate, complete both missions, complete Malandra's mission and complete our own personal mission to, to defeat these robots and stop them trying to destroy this base. What are your thoughts, guys? Sounds like a good plan. 
Yeah, I guess best case scenario, we take the ship back to to Khan personally. Yeah, I mean, ha now that I'm on the front of the console, I'm assuming we're going to need like super hadrons to actually go through faster than light and stuff. Correct. So you need a refueling of that in some fashion. Do I have any idea as to how space worthy this thing is? Obviously, it can fly through an atmosphere, but there are a lot of uh, uh, red signal lights that suggest that it's probably not space worthy at the moment. There seems to be a lot of leaks. Hmm. So it's space worthy for anything that doesn't need to breathe. I don't suppose it's... this ship would fit <laughs> inside our ship. Uh, do you mean the uh, ship that you uh, took to land on the planet or the, the Cairo, which is still probably in or orbit? Oh, if the Cairo is in orbit, all we have to do is get it there. Pretty much, I'm guessing. Because the Cairo is a large capacity. I'm assuming it's got a bay of some sort, maybe. Yes. I don't know. Uh, in fact, uh, that's how you guys, uh, you know, had that uh, landing craft in the first place. Hmm. Does is there space for the landing craft and this ship? Do we think? Mm, good question. Um, I feel like abandoning the landing craft would be rude. <laughs> uh, you'd say it's that got a dead person in it. You don't want it anymore. <laughs> it's, all, it's, all, it's gone bad. <laughs> There's bodies inside. Yeah. Um, I yeah. will say that uh, you believe you could probably fit this uh, craft inside the the Cairo. Um, uh, it would, there'd be some issues with parking locations, but you can get it, uh, detached. And so may have to spacewalk back in, uh, uh, to the, the, the main, main airlocks. So, oh no, that would be, so, oh, how awful. If only someone had a really good spacesuit. Um, yes, Bell <laughs> Andre does. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and sh does she have fucking spacer or piloting or navigation space? That's the question. Uh, do I don't think she has all of those. I think she might have some. Well, then, then she doesn't count. <laughs> NPCs don't steal the glory. No, she does have spacers, right. yes. Um, okay, cool. Well, I would say, shall we? It sounds like a, shall we just fly over to this place to get some more fuel and? Uh, we need to go there anyway. Yeah, it sounds like, I said, like if it. it I said, like you said, if it is swarming, we can always head back to the home base with it anyway. We have the yeah. fuel to redirect. I was we'll how, to... how much should I not trust the clones since we probably didn't hear the thing earlier? <laughs> yeah, you, the <laughs> conversation that uh, was in the intro section, uh, you guys are completely ignorant of that. But at the end of the day, I'm not waiting for them because we told them to bugger off. So it's kind of like I'm just going to ignore them and carry on. <laughs> so they may be watching this whole situation and you guys dealing with robots, but they, that the, the, the bus vehicle didn't approach at all. Oh, well, okay. screw them. Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> they could have helped, but they chose not to, so... Yeah. Cool. I'm going to I'm gonna prep for launch, make sure that all the things are uh, set up, make sure everyone's strapped in, because, you know, we don't know how bumpy this ride's going to be. Um, and, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take her up if I can, with a, with a bit of AI assistance, if, if the AI wants to assist or something. I don't know. All right. So uh, give me a, a roll, appropriate roll. <laughs> Something like ship handling spaceship, something like that. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do, 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 do. You roll 18, are you? <laughs> <laughs> that would be uh, unfortunate. No, I made that by three. All right. So uh, you, uh, you know, double check everything. The 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 airlocks kind of seal. Um, the some systems try to pressurize the cabin. They, they, they fail at that. Um, so you guys still have to keep your masks on. But the engines do come to life. Now, the $64,000 awesome. question is, is there going to be a failure that you were unable to observe? Well, that is a good question. And uh, this is actually a roll versus Harris skill. And in... Where is she, where's our engineering? Uh, doo -doo -doo. I should just organize these by alphabetical. I'll make things easier. Engineering starships. Um, so she gives you a couple warnings on, uh, you know, things not to do as far as the you know, gent repair of this uh, 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 sh uh, ship. Um, so yep. don't hit the afterburners. They'll explode. Uh, don't go past this uh, level of thrust, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the way the rolls because the decks are fine. All right, 
Do we know if the Cairo has any salvage abilities? Um, and in what fashion? Well, I mean, taking this rickety ship up to the Cairo, contingent on us getting more fuel from a base full of killer robots, um, we could just set it down somewhere safe and then have the Cairo recovered on their own. Uh, the Cairo is not equipped to land on a planet, um, so they would have difficulty uh, uh, assisting that uh, in that fashion. Um, but, you know, they might be able to ferry down some fuel. But that would require uh, more logistics. And you are... I figure if we if we have to solve this robot problem anyway, then we solve that. Um, you guys, or a number of you guys, head back to the small ship. Take that back, because obviously you can't just abandon it. And then myself and maybe Melandra can then fly this thing, since neither of us... We don't need to then seal the hull, potentially. Um, fewer repairs required. Fly that up to the Cairo. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, get to the final final dungeon, fight through whatever, have Mel reprogram all the robots so they can repair our ship because we'll find the central core hub thingy in there, and then Bob's your uncle. <laughs> that, that would also work really well, yeah. I respect that optimism. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so... Uh... The engines are, are, are coming to full full power. They're ready to, uh, to activate. Cool. I'm going to take it very gently, keeping an eye on all the little warning lights. All right. The the, uh, the landing craft here, this little you know, planet hopper, starts coming to life, vibrating. It's a rough ride, but you start to lift off from the ground. Um, your, your instincts are to pull up the landing gear. Um, then you realize, oh, they were not deployed in the first place. And, uh, <laughs> and they're deploying instead. <laughs> and uh, you know you have a, a rough takeoff, but you are uh, you know slightly airborne at this point. Uh, you know under sort of minimal thrusting of capabilities, but you are traversing you know the distance uh, you know reasonable pace. Um, it will take a little bit of time to get your, you know, to your destination of choice, uh, which is effectively anywhere else than here right now. But uh, you guys can uh, you know you know you know you know still perhaps quibble about that for the next few minutes as you guys uh, transit, but that'll be about the end of today's session. Except, as you are you're lifting off cash, you get a, a buzz on your phone. Uh, I guess I'll answer it. Right. Do you have a, like a really cheesy song as your ringtone? Please tell me you do. It's not your no, default. Sorry. I'm all out of love. I'm so lost at that. She... <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, Cash, you hear on the other voice a voice of uh, one of the Norcuses, uh, and he says, Hello, is this Cash? Yeah. Uh, this is uh, in uh, Norcus uh, C15. Uh, we got a uh, priority message for you. Uh, would you like me to send that through to your phone? Sure. All right. Um, uh, I may have looked at it. I apologize. I just want to let you know. Bye. Like, <laughs> Did make a note C fifteen minute to die soon. <laughs> um, but uh, you uh, uh, get a uh, you start getting a data transfer of uh, uh, effectively a video message, and what that video message is will be the intro for next session. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Right. Dun, dun, dun. So not only will the intro be relevant to our current situation, but it will actually be something we as characters know about as well. In media res. <laughs> Conceivably, uh, provided uh, you know, you know, Van, do you, are you going to be sharing with people uh, then and there as you guys are taking off and watching this little vi uh, video clip, or are you going to be uh, you know keeping this uh, for the on the DL for now and and uh, keeping that for when you have a few minutes privacy? Because it does say right at the, at the in the title, you know, for your eyes only. Yeah, I'll watch it in private and then share if it's relevant. <laughs> he sits in the corner with headphones. <laughs> so you guys are off off the surface, and that's today's session. So, yeah, thanks for uh, hanging out with me. And uh, once again, this lasts a lot longer than I was planning. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's wow. okay. That's cool. But you guys, if you fine, fine. if you hadn't set this up two weeks ago, I would have thought you based this whole thing off of this week's Star Trek episode. <laughs> yep. <laughs> 
you know, uh, for for those uh, you know, uh, you know, not in the know, me and Gepwin are doing a podcast where we go through Star Trek episode by episode, and th- you know, this, the next episode we're covering is one that uh, involves a shuttlecraft crash <laughs> and collecting fuel <laughs> and all that fun stuff. Are we? Are we which uh, which series are you doing? Uh, original series. Oh, the original bloody hell! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and all the cheese and what the hell were they thinking? <laughs> and, and polystyrene boulders everywhere. Yep. A lot of those this week. <laughs> See, that's the only Star Trek series I didn't like is the original. I liked it, but it was the only. I like the original movies. Yeah, I like the original movies, but I didn't like the original series. Yeah, I'm. I'm trying to figure out how they get from where we are now with such horrible things to such good movies. <laughs> <laughs> that always confused me as well. <laughs> movies were so good compared to the series. I like the series, but it was the one that I had when I was growing up. So you know, that's uh, the I grew up with the Next Generation. So yeah, when I was a, when I was a teenager, then the Next Generation started kicking around that time. So that was that was good. Well, yeah, that sort of time. It was good. It's all good. But uh, we're not the Galileo Seven. You're you're some sort of registration number spaceship here <laughs> <laughs> anywho um let's do uh the outros uh we'll uh, start with you van uh since you did get to do your uh, your introduction and all that yeah sorry i'm van velding i do a podcast called the beige and the bold and i apologize for being late today no worries you know, your life happens sometimes so um peter i'm peter tilty x i do gameplay on youtube and uh, twitter Twitch and Twitter is uh, where you find most of the information for like announcements and stuff. Cool. Um, yeah, and that, that's it. I'm all the places. Gepwin? Hello, I am Gepwin. I do YouTube video thingies. You can find me on Gepwin everywhere. If you find a Gepwin, it's me because it's an unusual name. And as we were talking about before, I co host a Star Trek sci fi podcast with Dr. Izix. Hi. That you can find at watchersoftomorrow.com. And Melik? Hey, I'm Melik, and I hope you all enjoyed this session as much as I did, because I definitely did. He also has a YouTube channel. I do, I do. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> it's all right. He runs his own uh, tabletop game there, for folks who are interested. Yeah, D&D 5th edition um, every Wednesday, but yeah, it's, it's, it's all cool. I might be a player in that game, guys. It's weird. You may, you may also be a player in that particular game. Yes, this, this is also very true. All right. Where he's a very shifty individual, I might say. Yes. Someone who's who's good at lying. And someone who's good at murdering named kobolds, who I liked. Murderer. <laughs> Poor Meepo. Anyway. <laughs> Moving on. Never um, have a favorite character near a player character. <laughs> Well, there's there's risk in it. In fact, I've had one of one of my favorite characters hanging out with you the whole time. Malahan. Never tell the players which your favorite character is. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you which one of the, <laughs> one of the, one of them it is. We'll kill them all. I think it's the squishy science boy. <laughs> I think the squishy science boy might be a psychopath, but hey, you know that's just me. But it's always the quiet ones, guys. The it's real murderer the were the friends we met along the way. <laughs> Anyway, you, you guys will have some uh, opportunities to perhaps speculate about uh, you know murders and uh, fuel and things like that on the next exciting episode or session or whatever the hell this is of a uh, of a se- of a stellar renaissance, the game uh, of the GURPS. Totals. <laughs> bye bye.